Hi people, my name is Mark Hahn. In light of the coronavirus pandemic that we're currently facing, I'm going to try and explain some of the rhetoric that's being tossed around from an operations management perspective. Oh, what are my qualifications? I'm glad you asked. I'm not a scientist, researcher, nurse, or a doctor. I did, however, fly jets for the Navy, which obviously qualifies me as an expert in everything forever. And since America's old favorite pastime has been indefinitely paused, I figured I would write this series on America's new favorite pastime, armchair epidemiology. My aim here is to take some of the things that actual experts are talking about and think about them using operations management frameworks. I'm not trying to promote any political or ideological agenda. In fact, my purpose is quite selfish. You see, I'm about six weeks away from finishing my MBA and I'm trying to find a job in the aerospace industry, which I hear isn't doing too great lately. Let's go to our field reporter, Rachel, for more on this story. I could totally make this move faster, by the way, but it's kind of creepy, so I kept it. Rachel, how's the aerospace industry looking? Oh, I see you were the only person on your flight today. Well, that's probably a bad sign. Rachel's a classmate of mine, and evidently pretty awesome at social distancing. Everyone follow her example and only fly on planes where you'll be the only customer. Just kidding, that would be terrible for the environment, but that's a separate issue. So evidently, I will have a lot of time for armchair epidemiology. Now let's do what we can to fix this so I can get a job. Yay. Here we go. Flatten the curve. We've been hearing this phrase all the time recently. So what is it? This little line here is the capacity of the U.S. healthcare system. Now this capacity is important because if we stay below it, the death rate of COVID is pretty low. Estimates range from about a half percent to three percent of infected people. This is evident in countries like South Korea, which has managed to keep the strain on its healthcare system below the critical capacity. Once, however, this capacity is exceeded by widespread strain on the system, the fatality rate becomes about five times higher. We are currently seeing this in Italy. As someone who's lived there and has friends there, my heart breaks for this situation. Some models show that the U.S. is on a similar path to Italy, and some experts are projecting that our healthcare system will be operating at maximum capacity or overloaded in the very near future. How exactly does a healthcare system become overwhelmed? Let's think about it this way. You own a little cafe. You do pretty well and are able to serve a decent number of customers. You generally operate at about 70 to 80 percent of capacity, but business can vary from day to day. This is called common cause variation. But wait, what's this? Oh crap. The Justin Bieber concert just let out down the street and now you have all these damn kids waiting in line for your cafe. As a side note, I've never experienced a Justin Bieber concert or lived through a global pandemic, but I'd imagine they're pretty similar in nature. Anyway, this is an example of assignable cause variation. You can only handle so many customers at one time, so a line forms. And that line gets longer and longer as long as people are arriving faster than you can serve them. But this is good for my cafe's business, right? You might think so, but eventually customers will get hungry waiting in line and go somewhere else. Or they will see the line and not even try and wait for a seat. Your business might get some bad reviews and it could be very stressful for your employees. Or get this, a T-Rex comes along and eats 10% of your customers waiting in line. The sad part is that this is actually happening because if there's a line in the healthcare system, people don't just get hungry and leave, they die. Since we are all customers of the same healthcare system, the vast majority of us can't leave and find another one with a shorter line. Why does this happen? Here's a fancy equation. Ooh, that looks so realistic, fake drawing hand. Anyway, this is the math behind queuing theory. I don't really understand math because I'm not a scientist, remember? But I know that this little formula is made up of two parts. This little piece right here is a measure of capacity strain. So if we operate at 75 to 80% of capacity based on forecasted demand, and this black swan shows up and tells us that resource utilization will be 10 times what we forecasted, the strain on the system is gonna go through the roof. There has to be another way to control the line. Well, what's this? This little thing right here is known as the variability of inner arrival times. Basically, all this is saying is that a line will form if we all go to the hospital at the same time. Makes sense, right? The Japanese call this Mura, which can be translated as unevenness. The idea that unevenness is detrimental to a system is a core principle in lean thinking. We need to smooth out the variation or flatten the curve in order to maintain a functional healthcare system. So the solution is pretty basic. Let's not all get the COVID at the same time. While it's hard to model the exact number of deaths that could be avoided by this strategy, some estimates say that millions of lives are at stake. And again, not a scientist, but I know this has to be bad because there are five schools above this line and one school below it. That's why we need to flatten the curve, 
or reduce our inner arrival variability by trying to slow the spread of disease. I know this all sounds cataclysmic, but I promise I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm simply trying to give a realistic sense of what's happening in our healthcare system through some operations management frameworks. There is hope, though. In the following segments, I'll explain how some simple operations management principles can alleviate the stress on our healthcare system and speed the process by which our society recovers from this pandemic. And then I can get a job. Thanks for listening. Here are a few ways you can help right now.